Alright, it's a nice sunny day and I got a new toy up on the roof. So let's go up and check it out. Alright, I'm just doing a little work on my on my uh, roof patio. I had put, I put some nice, uh, basically flashing down the sides to make it look nice from, from down below. And uh, also, a couple weeks ago, I received this awesome solar panel from Lensun Solar. And uh, they offered to send me a flexible 100 watt panel, or they actually had a whole bunch of choices, 50, 100s, 200s, all sorts of different styles. Like this company has uh, pretty much every style and size of solar panel that I've seen. I've never been a fan of flexible panels. Um, they delaminate, um, you can't get them off the roof uh, if you stick them down. There's horror stories of people ruining their, their uh, roofs and their paint jobs. And um, generally you should have a panel, like normal solar panels, you should have at least a bit of airspace underneath them uh, so they don't overheat. Um, but it was mostly the delamination problem and the permanent, uh, when, they're, when they're down they're permanent, that kind of bothered me and I just prefer uh, regular hard um, rigid solar panels. However, they had a solution for me when I brought this up and that is this one here. It is actually, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's kind of a rubber and it's got a texture to it and it even has a protective rubber edging around it. Like I can't see this ever delaminating. And as you can see, I'm standing on the beam on my roof. There's a beam every two feet, a steel beam, but in between there is no beam. So you can see if I kind of, I don't know if you can see that panel is flexing with the roof, which is great. So what I did to install it, of course, is I use what a lot of people use, which is uh, 3M VHB tape, which is very popular for installing even big aluminum solar panels on roofs without having to drill any holes. Now I'm not, I don't care about drilling holes. Uh, I've never had a hole in all my years uh, in my RVs uh, leak that I've put in. It's always, anytime I've had leaks, it's always been the factory holes like roof vents and windows. But I mean, it's pretty easy to seal a hole. So I got no problem with drilling holes. In fact, that's my preferred way of doing things. The roof deck has plenty of big holes. <laughs> Anyhow, with this, obviously you're not going to be drilling any holes because it's semi-flexible. Uh, this is very popular stuff. You'll see this uh, mounting large solar ar arrays on people's uh, motorhomes and, and uh, homemade RVs on school buses, you name it. Once you stick it down with this, it's very difficult to get off without cutting it. Um, it it's, it's the same as permanent. But uh, my roof, because of the beams being every two feet too, uh, even if I put it on a even if I put on any uh, solid aluminum one, I, I wouldn't be able to bolt it in directly on the ends of the solar panels. The, the uh, brackets would have to be where the beams are, like one there, and maybe maybe one there. You know. Anyways, it just I'd rather it just be uh, secured down all around. So I used a bit of this uh, with some gaps all the way around, and it's uh, it'll never come off. Uh, good luck taking it off. But if you do want to take it off for whatever reason, you can take a razor blade underneath there and slowly cut it out and you can get it off without ruining the, uh, the van, uh, roof or paint or anything. So the back of the solar panel doesn't have any adhesive on it. So that's why you use this. Anyhow, so I ran all the cords down this uh, vent, which used to be for the composting toilet, which I'm selling because I really don't like composting toilets. Uh, but the vent's there and it happens to be, you know, so close to where I was going to put the panel that I just ran the uh, cords down there and through my new cabinets inside and to a new Renogy um, PWM solar charge controller. I am not an MPPT guy because when you're talking something under six or 700 watts, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. There's no reason to spend extra money on an MPPT. Absolutely no, no reason for that at all for a low, low user like me. This is 100 watts. I've got 80 watts on the back of the van. I can't see myself uh, uh, needing more than that. Uh, I haven't in the past. Generally, I use about 100 watts, uh, like a 100 watt panel on, on a beautiful sunny day like this is more than enough to top up my batteries. Uh, the panels on the back of my van, the 80 watts on the back there, again, charged my batteries this morning before I even woke up, before the sun even hit this panel. But uh, I uh, do uh, check the monitor inside, and this is pulling in between 2 and 4 amps, generally. Midday, um, not bad at all. Uh, and, you know, it, it works. So, anyhow, the, the way my rationale, my thinking is, and has been with all my RVs, is have solar panels uh, in various locations and angles. 
some on the back, some on the front, some on the sides, and on top. So I've got 80 watts on the back. I will have 80 watts on the front on the slope of the van, which is right there above the windshield to catch sunrise, sunset, depending on which way I'm parked. I'll have a panel on each side, and then I got one on top. So this way, I'm always pulling in, you know, 80 to 100 watts or so. But I've got coverage no matter where I park. I don't, ha I don't want to have panels you have to go up and tilt or adjust. I, I, I drive every day. Sometimes I drive two or three times a day. I can't be going up on the roof and, and uh, putting up and down solar panels and things like that. So if you just have them permanently mounted in different areas, in different directions, you never have to worry about going up and tilting panels. So even if the front half of my van is in the shade, because I'm under a tree, and the back half's getting some sun. Even if uh, the, the, even if um, the front is uh, facing uh, the opposite direction of the sun, the back of the van is getting uh, charged, because I have panels on the back. You see what I mean? So I kind of, I kind of only need 80 to 100 watts on average. So as long as I'm getting it from one of the panels at any given time, I'm fine. I don't have to worry about it. It doesn't matter. I don't have to worry about which direction I'm parking for the sun. I don't have to worry about any of that because there's always going to be a panel facing towards the sun no matter where I park. Anyhow, this, I mean, it just, it looks damn cool though. I just love it and I love the feel of it. You know, it, it doesn't have that, it doesn't have that plasticky shine to it and the, and the, you're not going to have to worry about it delaminating and looking like crap and then you're going to try to scrape it off your roof or whatever. I can see this lasting as long as the van does and as long as the aluminum solar, uh, aluminum frame solar panels can last and it's pretty damn cool. But I mean, you guys should go check out their site Lens, at Lens Solar. It's um, in the description below of this video. Of course, I linked. I'll link you to the page that shows all the panels and you can find this one too with the, uh, with the rubber edging and the uh, rubber texture. It's just, I love it. I don't know. It's cool. I mean, uh, I, I, I would probably order some more. I could put those on the front and back and everything, but the van already came with all of the 40-watt uh, panels, which I just linked together. Uh, so I'm just going to utilize uh, those for the rest of my solar panels. But uh, I don't know. It looks pretty cool. It's just like a black mat, basically. So I'd, uh, now that I've tested it for a couple of weeks, I'm going to highly recommend it. So I am putting the link down below. I'll also put a link on my website, jcred.tv, of course, or justincredible.tv. The link is also in the description. And you can also find other things that I have uh, um, installed over the years on various rigs, such as my wood stoves and, and that sort of thing. It's all on my website. Also, you will see a uh, link there for CamperCon, which is coming up August 3rd. I'm excited. I hope you're all excited. I'm going to do a video shortly uh, with some tips and, and updates for CamperCon. So uh, I hope to see uh, all you wonderful people at the beach here in Vancouver. Hopefully the weather is like it is today. We're going to have a nice little intimate uh, meet and greet with other people and their wheel estate. And we're going to have, um, we're going to have the best seat in the house for a good fireworks show too. So you want a panel like this? check it out the link is below in the description and if you want an easy way to install it grab yourself some of that 3m vhb tape this stuff is expensive it's like 50 bucks a roll but that's because it's as good as screws and nails keep on rocking in the free world everyone no mortgage, no yard work, no stress. This is Camper Con. Today at Spanish Banks, organized by a man who goes by the name of Justin Credible to a large following online. Today's event brought together van dwellers from across North America who share a nomadic rent-free lifestyle. Fridge, freezers in the fridge as well. And uh, we're no different than somebody who wants to live on a boat, for example. In a world where rent is unaffordable, Freedom is unattainable, and people are held hostage by landlords. Many folks from all walks of life have traded their real estate for wheel estate. Saturday, August 3rd, we put the van in Vancouver for the fifth year in a row as van and RV dwellers take over the beach while slightly annoying the wealthy house dwellers nearby. Get ready for CamperCon! Details at jcred.tv